Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ. I am Reverend Liz Patz, pastor at St. Paul's, and it is a joy to be together on this maybe the coldest Valentine's Day that uh, we've had in recent memory. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Announcements. It is Ash Wednesday this week. Wednesday, February 17th. Please join us on Zoom at seven o'clock for an Ash Wednesday service. That link and bulletin will be mailed out this week. Also this week, Council will be meeting on Thursday, seven o'clock on Zoom. And that link also will be sent out this week. Are there other announcements for today? Anne? This afternoon, it's letting a bag pickup time. If you want to braid the elements, you'll be receiving a nice bag with everything in it for Ash Wednesday and for other activities throughout Lent. Now, if you can't or wish not to make it out this afternoon, we understand it's, it's dangerous wind chills out there. You can pick them up at church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday between nine and one. If you can't make it by Wednesday, well, you can still get it. You just won't have the Ash Wednesday things. Thanks, that's it, stay warm. Thank you, Ann. If there are any Liz, questions, yes. Um, I just wanted to remind, remind everybody about pads on Tuesday. Oh, thank you very much. If you are a person who signed up for those meals, you can drop that off Monday at the church. Sandy, is that correct? Great, thank you. All right, let us begin worship and be greeted this morning. We have a special Valentine's treat special music for you this morning. Good morning, St. Paul's. I'm Connie, this is Vern. We're here at the church assembling the Lenten bags. Happy Valentine's Day. Keep warm and safe and pick your Lenten bags up this afternoon. round of applause. Thank you so much, Winifred, for that special music. Friends, let us read together this morning's call to community. Please read aloud the words in bold. Gathering in this sacred time, we anticipate new wonders each week. Wherever two or three are gathered to worship, a Holy Spirit is present. Open our eyes to witness the fantastic love and wondrous joy waiting to be revealed even this day, even in this moment. We will want to linger and camp in this moment, but when we leave today, may our hearts be open to all the wonders of God's beautiful world. Our gathering song this morning, wherever two or more are gathered. Wherever two or more are gathered, wherever two or more are gathered, wherever two or more are gathered, I 
will be there Wherever two or more are gathered Wherever two or more are gathered Wherever two or more are gathered I will be there I was there in the beginning I'll be with you till the end You are all my children You are all my friends Yes, I'm the one who called you And this is what I want you to do Love each other as I have loved you As I light this candle, inviting the light of Christ among us, hear these words of invocation. O Holy One, on mountain tops and valley floors, you reveal to us the light of your love. With each encounter, we are changed and transformed. Draw us nearer. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as a reflection of divine glory. May we walk among our neighbors as a blessing, bearing light into dark places, hope to displace despair, and love that casts out hate. Amen. Let us read together the prayer of confession together. Forgive us, God, when we linger too long by the waters and on the mountaintops, enthralled with the glory that flows from you. When we fail to listen to your voice leading and guiding us, shake us from our contentment and send us forward endowed with your power. Amen. Let us take a moment of reflective silence to bring our confessions before God. The God of Elijah, the God of Moses, and the God of Jesus desires mercy more than sacrifice and a contrite heart rather than burnt offerings. Love God and do the right thing and forgiveness shall be your friend and mercy, your true 
companion. Amen. I invite Mrs. Smith, or I'm sorry, Mrs. Westerman today for time with children. Mrs. Smith could do it. She does a better job. Um, today, boys and girls, first of all, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thank you, Jonathan. How about, so we have Jonathan and Benjamin, and we have Charlie. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Anybody else? I'm trying to see. Winifred and Hayden. Yeah, we have all, okay. And I see Jeff and Ken in Florida, but is Tinley with you guys? No? No, she's probably enjoying the warmth outside. Okay. Charlie and Winifred, Iris, and Jonathan and Benjamin, have you, today we're going to be, um, our lesson is about the couple of the disciples going on a mountain experience with Jesus. A mountain experience. Mm, I've never really heard about a mountain experience. A mountain experience is a happy, fun, exciting event. And a valley experience is a sad and hard thing that happened. Let's talk about the mountain experience, okay? Because that is such a fun and exciting thing. Has any of you had a mountain experience this week? Oh. Uh, scavenger hunt I got for Valentine's Day. You, you had a scavenger hunt. Oh, I know how much you like those. Yes. Mommy, we had uh, Charlie and um, Winifred and Iris, have you had an ex mountain experience this week? No? Go ahead. You're shy? You're shy? <laughs> well, we had a great mountain experience listening to you play the violin this morning. Has anybody had a valley experience this week? That means it's kind of been a sad time for you. Is there anybody think that's had a, a valley experience? Maybe just not being able to go outside because it's too cold. Because you've been going outside a lot, right? That's kind of sad. You haven't been able to go out. It's been too cold. Well, let's listen to today's story about the disciples having a mountain experience with Jesus. The Transfiguration, a reading from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Peter, James, and John were very excited. They were climbing a mountain with Jesus. Higher and higher they climbed, right to the top. Then they noticed something different about Jesus. Jesus' face and clothes were bright and shiny like the sun. Moses and the prophet Elijah were standing with Jesus, talking about God's promise to save the world. Peter couldn't believe his eyes. Suddenly, a cloud covered the mountain. A voice said, This is my son. Listen to him. The voice was God. Peter, James, and John covered their faces. Then Jesus touched them. They peeked up. Everything was the same as it was before, even Jesus. On the way back down the mountain, Jesus, Peter, James, and John talked about God's promise. Wow, what an amazing experience on the mountain. Seeing Jesus' face and clothes brightly shining. The disciples were afraid. I wonder if I would have been afraid too. I think I probably would have been. Do you think you would be been afraid if you saw that? The disciples heard God's voice on the mountain. 
We know God is everywhere. But when, but many people find it easier to find God's presence in particular places. Some people feel God's out, God outside in nature, like on a mountain or on a church or in a room in their house. These places can help us feel peaceful inside. Some places that I feel peaceful are in the summertime when I'm outside on my deck and I just sit there and I get to hear the birds sing and it's so quiet and it's so peaceful. Sometimes I go in a room that I have in my house, we call it the green room. And I just sit down and I, it just feels peaceful. Another time I see it, when I look at Hayden and I see Hayden in the background with the beautiful palm tree, that makes me feel so peaceful, Hayden. Where are some places that you feel peaceful? Is there any place that you feel peaceful at? No? Well, think about it. Let us say a prayer. Where? My cousin's house. At your cousin's house? <laughs> Well, that, that's never peaceful, but it, yeah, I mean, it would be so peaceful there. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's say a prayer together, okay? Let's fold our hands and close our eyes and repeat after me. Thank you, God, for being with us at all times. And in all places, but especially in these peaceful places. In the peaceful place. Amen. Amen. Okay, we have a coloring page for you to do with Jesus on top of the mountain. And we can't wait to see them at the end of the service. Thank you. Thank you, kids. Thank you, Mrs. Westerman. Let us now prepare to hear this gospel reading. I'm going to share my screen. Today, we're going to hear that reading live. Jim Werner is our scripture reader. And Jim, let me get the slides ready. All right, we are ready, Jim. Today we're celebrating the Sunday of the Transfiguration and the scripture lesson is from Mark 9, 2 through 9. Here then the reading of the lesson. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the last week of the season of Epiphany, the season of showing forth revelation, insight. We started Epiphany with star words words to guide us to more truth, more insight, a deeper faith. Some of you have shared with me your own wonderful and meaningful epiphany stories.
that have come from your star word, how it has challenged you, shown light on something new, revealed to you something about yourself, about God. For Mark, the transfiguration that Jim read for us is in many ways the mother of all epiphany stories. New Testament scholar N.T. Wright says, this moment on the mountaintop is a sign of Jesus being entirely caught up with, bathed in the love, power, and kingdom of God. It transforms his whole being with light in the same way that music transforms words that are sung. This moment is the sign for Peter, James, and John that Jesus is not just indulging in fantasies about God's kingdom, but that he is speaking and doing the truth. It's the sign that he is indeed the true Messiah. Transfiguration. The language of Christianese is sometimes head scratching. Today, Transfiguration Sunday is most likely the only time that you or I will ever use the term transfiguration. But it feels right to have a special word to describe this most special moment. Try to imagine Jesus' transfiguration, his change into brilliant light, Moses and Elijah appearing, God's voice speaking, all clear as day. There's no word for that. Even Peter, when he speaks, does not try to explain what is happening. He doesn't try to ask how, who, why. Peter speaks what he is feeling. Peter says to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let's stay a while. There on the mountain, Peter, James, and John experience a moment of spiritual intimacy. They encounter the divine on that mountain. And Peter wants to stay there build encampment there, linger. Surely you and I can relate. Have you ever been in a moment of complete awe and wonder when you wanted time to stand still? A moment of complete assurance, joy, peace, when you felt a grounding some connection was made heart to heart to another, to creation, to the divine, and you just wanted to stay there. Those moments are life-giving, centering. They refuel us in a way. Peter, James, and John are meant to witness this moment. Matthew Meyer Bolton writes, Jesus invites the three disciples to the mountain that day. He creates this experience for them. And he also makes them walk back down the mountain. See, in the verses just before this passage, Jesus tells what is arguably his most disturbing, difficult teaching of all that he must suffer, die, and rise again, and that anyone who wishes to follow him must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. The disciples are understandably bewildered by these ideas, and Peter even argues with Jesus. Maybe the transfiguration's brilliant light acts as a kind of reassurance 
for Peter, James, and John, and for the rest of us too. Our Lenten journey begins next week, but this week is a reminder of what lies ahead. Meyer Bolton writes, today we arrive at a clearing on the mountaintop. And from here, we can survey both how far we've come and the Lenten journey ahead. Maybe like Peter, we want to stay here in the brilliant light with reassurance, God's voice to guide us with Jesus. But there are hard parts that we cannot skip over. Coming down the mountain, Jesus will now venture into the shadows of death. Jesus will go down into the depths of what can only be called God forsaken, and he will venture into the shadows of death precisely in order to scatter those shadows once and for all, overcoming them in the end with shimmering light. But first, this experience on the mountain. And so let's end Epiphany as we began, asking God to guide us. We accepted our star words as guides, leading to insight and revelation. Today on the eve of Lent, here on the mountain, we ask God to transfigure us too. Then guide us back down. Make us to shine the light of Jesus down in the valleys, in all the places where people do not know of mountains or where suffering have made them forget. Today, let us continue to walk with Jesus, continuing to trust and learn and grow. For we know that radiant beauty awaits on the other side of that cross on a hill. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer with a song. So transfigure me so that I might be. Try that. Transfigure me so that I might be more like Jesus, more like Jesus. Try that. More like Jesus, more like Jesus, transfigure me so that I might be. Transfigure me so that I might be. More like Jesus, Jesus my light, Jesus my light. So we're just going to go that, through that a few times. It's mostly just a refrain. Uh, there's a part where you can just stop and listen part way through. Jump in nice and loud. Transfigure me so that I might be more like Jesus, more like Jesus. Transfigure me so that I might be more like Jesus, Jesus my life. Same thing again. Transfigure me so that I might be more like Jesus, more like Jesus. Transfigure me so that I might be Take a break. From me. Take me up to the mountain. Shine your light down on me. Till the person you have always intended is the person everybody can say. Sing, transfigure me so that I might. 
like Jesus transfigured me so that I might Transfigure me so that I might be more like Jesus, more like Jesus. Transfigure me so that I might be more like Jesus, Jesus my light. Jesus my light. Jesus my light. Thanks for singing. We now come to the time in our worship where we lift the prayers of this community. Let us pray. Mighty and merciful one, you have come to us in glory. Now we come to you in prayer. We pray for the church, the body of Christ. Open our hearts in faith, enlighten our minds with knowledge, and strengthen us to proclaim the gospel. We pray for the people of all nations. Offer the leaders your mantle of wisdom and give the people your blessing of peace. We pray for our families, friends, and neighbors. Help them in times of trouble and be near when they are afraid. Bring healing and recovery. Make whole all that is broken. Speak truth to all illusion. Shed light in every darkness. Hear our prayers for the Kelly family, grieving the death of their mother and grandmother, Tony. For Naomi, and Bill, Nancy, David M, Bob D, Judy, Kathy, Shar, Rita, Dave, Keith, Tom, Brian, Becky, Joe, Rachel, Eric, Terry, Barb, Bert, R, Karen, Bev, Arlene, Sue, Shar, Allison, Mikey, Jim and Gloria, Florence, Barb, and Alice. Holy One, in receiving our prayers, reveal the glory and presence of your spirit alive in the world today. Free us from all doubts and empower us to act as a transfigured people. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our hymn of praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
Let us offer a dedication for the offering given this week. Please read aloud the words in bold. Peter offered to build a tabernacle on the mountain with Jesus, but God does not dwell in houses made with human hands. We offer ourselves in service to those God loves. We offer our sacrifices to build community, bring peace, and be a double blessing to those in need throughout the world. Together we pray. With these gifts, we proclaim not ourselves, but Jesus, and commit ourselves to follow a way that leads to love and life. May our sacrifice be witness to our love for each other and the God who loves us all. Amen. Our sending him, we have come at Christ's own bidding. Westerman. Hi, has anybody had a chance to color in their page today? Could we see them? Beautiful, Charlie. Okay, good. Okay, Char okay, yes, oh, nice. Hayden, did you get yours done? Great. Hayden. Oh, nice, Hayden. And Jonathan and Winifred and Charlie and Iris, good job. I hope you all have a great Valentine's Day. And we have some special things for your mommy to pick up for you for Sunday school starting this next starting next Sunday. Hope you all enjoy it. Hi. <laughs> Let us end this time of worship with a benediction. With the light of love around you and the fire of faith within you, go forth from this place, letting your life reflect the very face of God
which shines upon you with beauty, blessing, and peace. Alleluia. Go in peace. Amen. If you are staying for coffee hour, please unmute yourself. We hope to see some of you this afternoon. Have a great day. Stay warm, everybody. Stay warm, everyone. Huh?